Hi, in today's video I am talking about a skin concern that many of us experience as we go through the ageing process. My name is Abigail James, I'm a skincare expert and facialist and welcome to my channel. I am talking about pigmentation or uneven skin tone. It's so common for many of us as we go through the aging process. It might be some really visible pigmentation or it might be just a little bit of irregularity which is distracting from your natural glow and radiance. But there are practical things that we can do with your home care and treatments within clinic which I'm gonna share a few of those things with you within this video. Uneven skin tone can be the result of many different factors sun exposure, pollution, hormone imbalances and changes, those are generally the biggest culprits. When I'm chatting to people about their skin and the aging process and what their main concerns are, within treatments we can work on things like texture and smoothness and lift, but pigmentation is another top of the list concern for many, many people, and that becomes a lot more specific to treat. And it's essential that we get the right home care in place and then potentially also knowing what professional treatments are available to kind of work with that in clinic and at home. For total clarity, wearing SPF on its own is not going to be enough to get rid of your pigmentation. I have many people say, I've got pigment and I'm wearing SPF and I'm still getting more pigmentation. You absolutely will. A lot of that sun damage has been done years before and now it's becoming visible on the skin. So SPF is essential, however, it's not gonna be getting to the root cause and actually treating that uneven skin tone. So I'm going to be chatting about a few key ingredients that you might want to look for in your home care, some specific products at a different price point, and also something for those that are really into their naturals and cruelty free. I will also share some in-clinic treatments and also a key ingredient I highly recommend you avoid, even though it is widely used to treat pigmentation. So the chances are, if you are watching this video, you have been Googling how to treat pigmentation. And I'm pretty sure you will have come across some posts and things on social media about at-home remedies and how they can work on pigmentation. They won't. They absolutely won't touch the sides. If anything, they are only going to irritate your skin. With pigmentation, we need a much more scientific and targeted approach. And your professional home care is a key point to start with when we want to get results. So firstly, before I jump into any specific product recommendations, I just want to tell you about a couple of ingredients that are going to be really relevant as we then go through my product selection. So vitamin C. I think a lot of us are using it in our home care and it is well researched to help support in the controlling of pigment issues. It is brightening to the skin. It's an amazing antioxidant. So yes, that type of ingredient is brilliant and really relative. We will come on to why as we talk about key ingredients in the products that I'm choosing. So I'm gonna tell you about something called tyrosinase gonna have to bear with me because this is really really crucial when we're treating pigmentation. Tyrosinase is an enzyme found within the cells and it's key in the function of stimulation of pigmentation within the skin. When our skin is exposed to sunlight, trauma, um, hormone imbalances, maybe even illness, sometimes our tyrosinase enzyme activity can be increased which can then kick out the pigmentation issues because all of those melanocytes have just been stimulated way too much. So what we need is a group of skincare ingredients called tyrosinase inhibitors. There are a number of different ingredients under the bracket, that was an umbrella, um, that's a bracket, of tyrosinase inhibitors. Some of them are more natural and some of them are a lot more clinical and scientific and one of them is definitely to be avoided. 
So, I'm hoping we've kind of clarified vitamin C's are important, uh, tyrosinase inhibitors are important, and I know I've mentioned SPF previously. Um, so let's now jump in with my first recommendation, and I am going for a product that is gonna just be amazing for those that love the natural, the organic, the vegan, the cruelty-free, the ethically sourced, the biodegradable packaging, toxin-free, you name it. This brand ticks all of those boxes. I am talking about a lovely New Zealand brand called Antipodes. This is the specific product I am talking about. This is a brand new, it is called DM, Vitamin C Pigment Correcting Water Cream. So what is super interesting, that while I've been doing this research into products that I think you guys are really gonna benefit from, some of the key ingredients that this natural and certified range are using are actually very, very similar to some of the very clinical ranges that I'm, I'm also gonna be recommending one of those later. But fascinating that these guys are using the same technology and science. Antipodes of the range, they are all about science and nature and they do so much research into what they're doing. So, and their price point is lovely as well. I think kind of across the whole range, their price point is kind of around, let's say the 20 pounds to max 48.50. So this particular product is a brand new, they have also got some others in their brightening uh, range as well. There is a glow ritual serum and a, an eye cream as well. But I might kind of, if I've got enough time, I'll tell you about those as well. The DM Vitamin C Water Cream. This is packed with actives that your skin is going to love. So firstly, and let's tick off one of our tyrosinase inhibitors, which we've mentioned, they are using a specific peptide. So this peptide that they're using has been scientifically proven to reduce that tyrosinase activity, so therefore switching off the pigment switch within the skin, which is one of the key steps. If we can kind of be switching off rather than waiting for the pigment to appear, we're kind of ticking a lot of boxes with a tyrosinase inhibitor preventing further damage and kind of almost keeping the lid on pigmentation. Then we've got the vitamin C. These guys are using kakadu plum, which is also one of the ingredients in one of these very clinical sciencey ranges. The vitamin C levels in kakadu plum compared to oranges, I think it's a hundred times more powerful, potent vitamin C. And as I mentioned earlier, vitamin C is amazing for brightening the skin and it is key as an antioxidant for supporting, keeping intact that, that pigmentation issues. So you've got the brightening of the vitamin C and then you've got the pigment switching off from the peptides and you've also got bacuchiol, which if you haven't heard about bacuchiol, bacuchiol is a natural alternative to a retinol. It's not retinol, I need to be totally clear with that. It is from plant source, but the science has shown that it uses a similar pathway within the skin to boost cell turnover, to brighten, to smooth. And when we're talking about treating pigmentation, we do need to boost that cell turnover. We need to be kind of almost lifting up and out where we can the pigmentation so that then our other actives, that vitamin C's and things, can then be more effective. So boosting cell turnover in a natural way with Bacuchio. You then also have this hyaluronic acid for that skin hydration. We want to keep the skin plump and and nourished as well. So that's just kind of the, the key ingredients in this particular product. It is, texture-wise, because I know it's always good to know how a product is gonna feel and, you know, the experience of using it. Even though smell doesn't benefit our skin, we also really want a product that's a nice experience to use as well. So I find scent of this is quite 
delicate. It's got a soft but slightly freshness to it. And it is a cream. There we go. It's almost a gel cream. Quite lightweight. It's not a heavy, thick, rich cream. When we are treating pigment issues, I would definitely be recommending layering up your skincare. So cleansing, serum, and then moisturize SPF. So if you wanted to stay within that same bracket of natural, ethical, vegan, antipodes also have a really lovely vitamin C serum. The, it's called the Glow Ritual. Uh, vitamin C and hyaluronic serum which would sit really lovely underneath that as a moisturizer they have very similar key ingredients there is the bacuchiol for that cell turnover there is the kakadu plum I hope I'm pronouncing that right I think I am for the mega vitamin C and the hyaluronic let me show you this as a texture like so so it's kind of lightweight and there is, there's a little bit of luminosity to it. So there's an element of, I suppose fake it till you make it, that there's a nice sheen that it gives to the surface of the skin as well. So just a, uh, another little bit of information about Antipodes as a range. And I've kind of got a list here. All the products I'm recommending today are paraben free, uh, toxin free, and just the way they're formulating is how I would like brands to be formulating. But Antipodes, they definitely go that one step further. So I just wanted to read out here, they are completely free from parabens, sulfates, phthalates, uh, silicone derived ingredients, synthetic fillers, genetically modified ingredients, genetically engineered ingredients, animal ingredients other than uh, honey, artificial colours, artificial fragrances, chemical sunscreens, mineral oils, petrochemicals, peroxyethanols, blah 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 blah. There is a whole list of things that they don't put in there, but there's a whole load of things that they do, which is actually the good stuff that we we want in our skincare products okay so let me jump on to my second product choice and i'm purposely jumping in with this next one because some of the key ingredients that they are choosing to use are very similar to antipodes the product that we've just been talking about so i am talking about a range called skin better science and their even tone correcting serum so the price point of Skin Better Science definitely jumps up to the higher range, but this is a range that I use within my treatments and I will also use their peels within my treatments and peels is another method of really supporting pigmentation issues as well. Skin Better Science as a range, they are also paraben free, uh, fragrance free, cruelty free, dye free, you know, so again, there's some lovely ethics with the range, but they are really about the clinical results. And um, if you go onto their website, you can see some quite incredible before and afters as well. So the Even Tone Correcting Serum, there is Kakadu Plum, which I've already mentioned, which as I said, is like mega amounts of vitamin C. And that's where they are sourcing their vitamin C from. And there is also a key peptide, which we mentioned peptide before, that these guys are also using for really supporting that pigmentation process. Then we've got Hexyl Resorcinol, which is a multifunctional ingredient, brilliant for skin brightness. And it's also a powerful antioxidant. Then we've got things like Alpha Arbutin, which can help reduce uh, the dark spots that you might see. So we've got the tyrosinase inhibitors switching off the pigment process and then these have also got some ingredients that are going to also reduce the dark spots that we've got there and then a whole load of other science going on its texture let me twist the lid up is a bit like a a lightweight cream so i would cleanse my skin 
you could just put this on as your serum slash cream and then put a moisturizer at the top if you want to. You can put it on morning and night. You could, it's got a really lightweight, almost not there, disappears kind of feel to it. But if you had a watery type serum, you could put that underneath and then this over the top. So maybe, I don't know, a hyaluronic, or maybe if you wanted a pure vitamin C serum, you could then put this over the top of that. If you're anything like me, you might get frustrated with some brands where you know that there's still gonna be some products left in the bottom of a tube or something and you can't quite get to it. This, even though we can't see the bottom of what's left in, they have a unique system that almost dispels every single last bit of it. It's also an airless container, so no air or oxygenation can be happening to those key ingredients, so it stays as active here as it does down here. Okay, so that is Skin Better Science, even skin tone. Okay, and the last product I'm gonna tell you guys about is from a range called Ice Clinical. Uh, this is the range. This is not the specific product. I didn't realize that, because uh, I'm using it on my own skin, uh, I'd, I'd finished it and thrown it away, even though I was planning to include it in this video. So here's a picture of what it should look like. But I still close a range. I also use these in my treatments. And again, they've just got, I, I love what they're doing with the ingredients list. So the brightening serum, its price point I think is about 66 pounds. They are going about with this product, treating pigment issues in a slightly different way. They have got the alpha arbutin, which is same ingredient as the Skin Better Science is using. So that is a tyrosinase inhibitor, turning off the pigmentation switch. But then these guys are putting a blend of different exfoliating acids in there to also be supporting all of that process. So there is willow bark, which is salicylic acid. So it also has, because salicylic is a little bit antibacterial. So for those with pigmentation issues that are prone to more oily or much thicker skin, this might be a better choice for you. They've also got lactic acid, which uh, exfoliates, it brightens, but also hydrates. And there is also kojic acid. And kojic acid is another one of those key tyrosinase inhibitors. So just the way they're going about the supporting of the brightening of the uneven skin tone is quite different to those first two products that I've told you about. And it doesn't mean that one is better than the other, it's just sometimes we need a, a multi-layered approach to, to getting the results because all of our skin is so individual and unique and the root cause of your pigmentation issues actually might be different to mine and my pigmentation issues might be more visible and need a more punchy treatment than yours. Okay, so this is now a really important part of this video that I really need you to listen to. I'm gonna tell you about an ingredient that I really want you to avoid like the plague. It is widely used in dermatology to treat pigmentation. However, I have seen awful results as a, as a result of someone using this on their skin. I am talking about hydroquinone. It's kind of basically a bleaching agent. So it's basically taking that pigment out of the skin. And if you were to go to, you know, a doctor, a dermatologist or something, and you, you want a prescription for treating your pigmentation, the chances are you might be given a product with hydroquinone in. There is also other clinical ranges that also still use this as one of their key ingredients. While you are using hydroquinone, you go, oh, isn't this amazing? Look how clear my skin is. The pigmentation is gone. Wow. It's taken the pigment out of your skin, basically. It's a bleaching agent. Um, to the point that you are not allowed to use it long-term because part of that process is our natural 
sun protection, our skin's inbuilt defences. But what I have seen many, many times from new clients who found me in my treatments with pigmentation issues, when they stop using those ingredients over a short period of time, that pigmentation bounces back 10 times worse. And then you're into a whole other, holy moly, how do I now deal with this? So please, please avoid it like the plague. There are brands out there that will show you amazing, here's a pigmentated face. Oh my goodness, look how amazing it is now. Yeah, because we've taken the pigment out of it fully. Of course it's not gonna show pigmentation issues because we've bleached your blooming skin with an awful ingredient. But they don't show you maybe the six months or a year later when that client has had to stop using the ingredient because it's not safe for our health to use it and the pigmentation bounces back. Okay, little rant over. Okay, so home care is essential. We've, I've made that clear, your key ingredients, but that might and possibly won't be getting the results you want if you have pigmentation issues. That is then when you need to come and see a clinician and look at some potentially professional treatments. So there's a couple of methods that I'm gonna talk about just briefly. One of them is some skin peels. Potentially start off with some low level peels and dependent on the blends of acids that might be used, it might be you know, your glycolics that will exfoliate, but then getting your kojic acids and your mandelic acids into it, because they're then more of your tyrosinase inhibitors and ones that can really be targeting the pigmentation. But your therapist, your clinician, will be able to really help with that side of things. So that's where you can work as a tag team with your home care and then some professional treatments and obviously keeping on top of your SPF. One of the gold standard professional treatments for dealing with pigmentation is IPL, Intense Pulse Light Therapy. I have written a blog all about this, so you can go and find that on my website, okay? IPL is, it's not quite laser. Laser light is basically light in a beam. You know, it's refined light. IPL, it's still working with light, but it's broad spectrum light. Dependent on the machine being used and the wavelength of light, it can target a number of different chromophores within the skin. One of those being our melanin, our color within the skin. So firstly, IPL isn't necessarily safe for all skin tones. So choosing your practitioner is, is really important. So the darker skin tones, it's a, you need to kind of just be very careful with how those kind of skin tones are treated. The other thing with uh, a Caucasian type of skin, we need the skin not to have active tan on the skin because that means if you've got some tan, you've already got some of that melanocyte activity, your pigment within the skin that is heightened. So if we were then to go in and treat it with IPL, it's gonna be picking up on the pigment that's in your skin just from the tan, which is naturally gonna disperse, uh, and then could cause you further problems. So those are the, the kind of important things to really bear in mind when you're looking at those kind of treatments. However, disregarding all of that, or no, not disregarding, taking all of that into consideration, IPL is amazing at treating pigmentation. You generally need a course of it and you can have it on a low level added into certain treatments, but if you've got certain pigmentation concerns and sunspots, if you decollete anywhere on the body to be honest, IPL is brilliant for that. I find when you treat immediately because we want that pigment to come up and out of the skin immediately it looks darker and it looks worse um, and it almost goes like coffee grains on the surface of the skin so again if you're not 
anticipating that or your therapist hasn't fully explained that process, you might think, oh my goodness, what have I done? I've, I've made this worse. However, give it two weeks, the results are amazing. But like I said, dependent on the depth of the pigmentation, what type of pigmentation it is, you probably will need a short course of it. I'm gonna say one to three, one to four treatments, dependent on the type of pigmentation that you're treating. I do find with clients that it might be within the less sunny months that we treat with IPL, but then as they go on holiday and they're gonna be in the sunshine, even though they are wearing their SPF, pigmentation is still going to come back a little bit so then we kind of keep up specifically with the home care all those kind of ingredients that we talked about not just your SPF and then when we come back round to we're out of the sun again we can come back to the IPL treatments so it might end up as a little bit of an annual check-in and retweak within the clinic to really keep on top of it IPL if you if you imagine someone's face was airbrushed it does that to the skin and when we're looking at someone's face or your own face and you're looking at kind of the things you're happy with or not yes we've got the sagginess and the lines but sometimes it can be that uneven skin tone that is also really bugging us so those are some of the best at home products that you can be using to treat your pigmentation and also some of the best clinic treatments. And it's that combination of at home and in clinic that are gonna get the best results. I hope you found that helpful. Please do put your comments below. Have you had any issues with pigmentation? Have you got any brilliant product recommendations? You know, I don't know everything out there, I try to, but I love your recommendations as well. Please don't forget to subscribe and like I love sharing these with you and I really look forward to seeing you again soon.